Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome at this webinar that Tom from Articulate will host today for us. My name is Marlies Oermans. I'm an account manager at the Courseware company. We uh, sell the uh, software from Articulate in the Netherlands and we offer training and support for the tools. Uh, I will be the moderator today and uh, I will keep an eye on the chat, but mainly uh, Tom will be uh, the one speaking and telling you all about a nice new feature that Storyline will have uh, probably at the beginning of uh, 2021. So it's a really cool feature, but I will, uh, yeah, I will give um, the mic to Tom, who will tell you all about it. Uh, as you can see uh, there, you can ask questions via the chat functionality, but uh, Tom will answer all those questions at the end of his webinar, because probably a lot of uh, questions will be answered during what he is uh, telling you. Uh, a few recommendations. Uh, please close uh, as many programs on your computer as possible. Uh, it will make the uh, images uh, better. Uh, sometimes we heard uh, in former webinars that the, the images were a bit blurry. Uh, sometimes it helps if you look at the webinar on a smaller screen. If you have two screens, maybe you can switch to a smaller one. Uh, but it also depends on your bandwidth, so it's uh, it can differ for uh, different persons. So um, this is one of the many webinars that we will host in these months uh, for the webinar weeks. Uh, normally we have the user days for our ticket, but this year, unfortunately, uh, because of COVID, it's not possible. Uh, so Tom is here today live from Phoenix. Uh, because he has a meeting today with uh, with David, who hosted the previous webinar. Uh, for more webinars uh, coming in the uh, yeah for the weeks uh, going on in October and November, you can check our website. Uh, the link I've posted it in the chat. Yeah, so you can uh, can check it out if you want. Uh, over to Tom. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you everyone for attending, and. Um, what we're going to do today is look at a new feature that should be coming out at the beginning of next year. We were hoping to have it out actually today or not today, but around this time. But with COVID, like everybody, everything kind of slowed down. So uh, we're looking at having this feature out probably at the beginning of, of next year. So I'll show you the way the feature works. Um, it's not complete. I don't have all of I'm working on a a very early release so it doesn't have all of the all of the options and everything in it so there's a lot of things missing uh, so I kind of did some workarounds to make it work the way it kind of should work but I'll show you how it's generally going to work and then I'll show you what I think is probably the most interesting part of that and then um, what I would say is um, hold all your questions until the end because I'm going to go into full screen so I won't see your questions and um, a lot of, like she was just saying, a lot of the questions may be answered. And, and again, this is a very early version of this. So we don't have every single uh, bell and whistle and feature in it. So there, what I'm going to show you today isn't the complete feature set. So just uh, keep that in mind. But it still works pretty well. Hopefully it won't crash on me. Um, that always seems to happen in webinars. <laughs> So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to switch over. You should be seeing my storyline screen. I'm going to make my screen larger so I could see it better. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you. I built a few different examples. I'll show you some of the examples. And then I can kind of walk through um, uh, some of the stuff here. This is actually not the one I wanted to show you. Uh, I wanted to show you this one because this one actually looks better. Let me see. Uh, let me, I think I have to change my sharing options to make sure you're seeing the right screen here. Um, let me do this. This is one of the problems with being on one screen is you can't really see. Okay, let me stop sharing and go to the other screen here. Change sharing window. And all right. Okay. This is a better, these are, these look a little better than the other screen. Okay. So I'll show you a few different examples of things I've built. I'll kind of talk through what's happening and then I'll show you how the feature works. So let me just preview this scene here. 
And again, this is pre-release, so it doesn't have everything we can do with it. Um, for examples, uh, there's only a few marker styles and then um, we can't turn the labels off and there's some other things that we can't do um, right now, but those things will be there in the tool. So what I did here is I, and this is the part I think is gonna be really nice about this. A lot of the other uh, like panographic image uh, tools on the market, they generally have this VR setting and then you have your image or video in there and then um, it's all contains and, and it kind of works that way because you have to have this thing that runs the, the panographic image. So most of the tools, it's, they're like a little isolated, it's an isolated container with the VR stuff. What's really cool with the way it's gonna work in Storyline is it's really not gonna be treated any differently than if you have an, uh, just inserted a picture and then you can do all sorts of things. So now you can open up, you know, you've, it's like you're gonna insert this picture, but it just happens to be a panographic. And then uh, you can use the layers and triggers and variables and everything else in there. Now you kind of have to think, and you'll see that when we start working on it, you have to think about it as kind of a different layer because you have this VR element that you have to have the image and the, the ability to edit it. Then once you come out of that, then you're going to be back into storyline with the layers and, and whatnot. But this example here, this is just a, you know, it's a car kind of comes in. And then I, this is just a regular marker like you have in storyline. Now, when I click on this, this is going to go to, I think this is a layer. I, can't, I think I built it this way. So this is a layer. What I'll point out on this one, when I click on it, I can frame up the, the VR. So in this case, when I click on this here, you can see it animates in, and then I've got, this is just a, um, I, I, I create a little, a layer with a little light box type of effect in here. But then this is the, the VR element to it. And again, it's, it's kind of simple right now because we don't have all the features. And so I can click, and, and this is probably more of a traditional type tour. You know, I can click and then learn things about, you know, the car or whatnot in here. Um, and then when you insert the images, this is a 360 image and you can also, you can really insert any image, but you know, if you insert a 360 image, it's, it's kind of formatted to, to spin around and do all this, right? You can, if you insert a, like a panographic image, it's going to kind of wrap it together. So there'll be, you know, the two ends kind of get wrapped together. Um, what I found playing around with that is if you if you don't have 360 images like this and you and you're using panographic images, you really want to have wide panographic images because it gets skewed a little bit. And you'll see that when you start when we have the feature out there. So I'm just going to close this. So this is pretty basic. It's really just this is a you know a marker. So I'm just triggering like you would anything in Storyline. I'm going to trigger, show a layer the layer this comes up in the layer and then this is the this is the vr so i don't have to use the entire screen now this is the part that i think is kind of cool this right here is also now it this is really just for effect it doesn't do anything but you know i could put multiple uh vr images in inside my thing so i'm just going to set it up so it looks this is actually a good example i think of the panographic one where you can see it was a panographic image i don't know if you could see it but there's a there's a very slight line right here where it's stitched together. It's actually this whoever shot this image. It's not too bad, but you can see it. You know, a really wide image. It kind of works. No, actually, I think this was a 360 image. So anyway, that's a pretty basic one. We'll go to the next one here. This one here, what I did here. This is a room, and then uh, inside the room, when I'm in here, I'm going to click. Now this is one of the label markers and this is actually going to go to another perspective so this i've kind of connected different views so this is a room with multiple perspectives in it so now i'm in a different side of the room and so i can go in here and i don't know how well on the on the webinar how well it comes through it's really smooth and then i could use the the layer transitions to um to animate so i'm going to go back here and then I can come here and I don't know if you could see the animation comes through here. And then this is a, just a different side of the room. So you could do like house tours. And I've got an example I can show you where I put together a simple house tour. 
Um, so you could, you know, if you had an office building or something, and then you just have these markers that would go there. And again, our markers are pretty basic right now. Um, and then this one here, let's see what I did on this. This was kind of, I wanted to overlay other elements. So, so far, all you've seen is the 360 image, right? So this is a dentist office. And then I wanted to put other things on there. So when I click here, let's see, this was the exit. We'll click on that and you can see it says goodbye, right? I'm gonna go back here. Um, and then um, I can click on things here and then get this information. So you can see now I'm using a layer, right? So, and then we'll be able to turn all this stuff off if you want to uh, when it's fully out there. But so I can go through here. So I'm not limited to just, and this is, I think, the most powerful part of this feature when it comes out. I'm not limited to what I can do within the VR world, right? Because I'll have these pre-built markers and labels, but I can actually just use the slide layers and make my own interaction, right? So I'm not, I'm not confined by what the, the tool's going to give me. I can build whatever I want to. Um, so that's that. And then... Um, Let's see what I did. Let me see if I thought there was something else interesting in here. Nope, I guess these were all the same. All right. So that's the tour of the dentist office for people who may be afraid of going to the dentist. Uh, this right here. This this is this is really just novel. This there's there's no VR stuff in here that I'm interacting with, other than the fact that these three images. So this is the part again that's kind of cool about it with storyline. These are all VR images. So I just kind of put these in here. These are, I was in these touring uh, to Italy. There's David right here. Got David, got my shoe somewhere in here. But this was when we were in Milan. This was Barcelona. This actually, I got this from the internet. But again, it's a kind of a novel thing. So you don't, you don't necessarily have to put labels in there, right? And again, you're not confined to just this, the single instance of the VR, you could use it, you know, in this case, it's pretty seamless, right? It's just, it's really no different than putting three pictures on there. And then this one here, let's see here, this is kind of a meet the team activity. Now what I have here is I'm tracking, you're gonna meet your team. I've got my kind of team mates out here and then I can track them. I think I'm using a variable on here because we don't have all of the features enabled, but when I click on this, it's gonna, I can learn about my teammate, I close it, and then you can see I'm tracking my progress through there uh, as I learn that. And again, I'm, I'm interacting with this here, but I've got other things overlaid on top of it, just like I would with anything else in Storyline. And when I click on this, this is just going to a lay, layer. I've got my information. I think I can, I think I turned these off, but um, you can see how that works here. And then um, now I've got all my people selected. This is the break room, blah, blah, blah. And I think that was the last one on here. I'll show you a couple of other ideas and then we can, I'll show you how that works. Or actually, let me just show you how it works. And then if you have questions, we can, we can play around with some ideas. All right, so generally the way it's gonna work, and again, just to reiterate all the features, a weird noise all of the features are not enabled yet but you'll get the general idea so i'm going to insert a slide so i'm just going to go to slides here and i'll insert a um, new slide we'll just do a blank slide here and then you're going to go up to insert you'll see an icon here now this is probably going to look different when it's finally released uh, 360 image when i click on that i need to find an image and then if you have the panographic images, the, the 360 images, those work really well. Um, if you don't, you can put, you really can put any image in there, but if it's not wide enough, it's gonna get skewed because it's gonna have to wrap it around, right? So uh, 360 images work. I'm just gonna, I think this is like a warehouse here or something. So we'll just open that up, gets inserted. And as you can see, once it's on your slide, it's just gonna look like an image. If I come down here on the timeline, you can see it just says 360 image, and it's just like an image on the timeline. Now, if I wanna edit it, I'm gonna select the image, and you'll see I have a, 
I'll have a media tool and then you can see, you know, pretty standard looking here. If I want to replace it, I can replace the image. Here, I'm going to go to edit. And this is going to take us into the editing environment. And this is where it's a little bit different. You know, if I insert an image, I have access to the layers and all the other triggers and stuff. Because I'm inside of here, I don't really see everything. Now, we have a, a simple trigger panel to do some basic things, but we are not enabling every single thing because it's it'll get really confusing when you're working in it. So you're gonna kind of build your thing here and then you would come out and then you would have, um, hopefully this doesn't crash on me. Um, it's all right. And there we go. Um, and then you would have your regular triggers and layers and stuff. So let's go ahead and do some basic editing in here. And so I'm going to double click that opens it up. We'll go to edit and I'm inside of here. Uh, you'll have, there'll be, there'll be some other features up here, but I want to insert a marker. It looks like we just enabled the hotspots, but I'll insert a marker. And then what, what the other thing that I think is nice about the way the markers and things are going to work. If you look at some of those VR examples, um, when you start moving this, you know, you get this distortion on the side, right? To get that 360 effect, but you get that distortion. So a lot of tools, this marker here would start stretching. And so instead of being a circle, it would become this big oval and it would look kind of weird. So we didn't want to do that. So I'll insert a marker. Let's say in the back here, this is where I would store, uh, we'll just say this is where I store batteries, right? So we'll say the battery section, right? right and then, Maybe I have got some information here about batteries. Just put some stuff. You'll be able to put some media and different things inside of this if you want to. So we got the batteries. But let's say that's at the back, right? This is the part that I think is also kind of cool. I'm gonna insert another marker and I'll uh, grab a marker here. Oops. Insert a marker. And then let's say up front here, this might be our box section. I don't know where we store our boxes. All right, and now we might have some information here, right? And then I wanna create the sense of distance in here, right? Because I don't really have a, uh, it's only 360, I don't have a uh, movement inside this 360 image. So I could scale these things to kind of create the illusion of that depth, right? So maybe I do something like this, right? So now you've got that sense of depth in there. And when you move it, it kind of retains that and you don't get that distortion when you're moving things around. Then it's just, then at this point, it's really no different than working with a labeled graphic type of effect, right? So maybe this is the exit. I'll come in here, select a marker. Right now we only have a few markers. Oops, it's not working for me here. We have a few marker styles. When I click in here, you can see there's just, it's, it's kind of limited right now, um, but you'll have some other things. Maybe this is the exit here. And then I want to change the color so you can see I've got my theme colors. Uh, I'll just make the exit red. Uh, and then you have like you can make this white with the red or you can come in here and do that. Right. Make it dark and do that like that. Um, let's say here I'm going to turn the label off. I think I can turn it off here and then this is just going to be the exit. And then I could put a trigger on here. So here I can come over here with the triggers panel. And again, you'll have some basic triggers in here, but you're not gonna have every possible thing you can do. But let's say when I trigger this, I wanna open up a layer, like a layer that just says goodbye or something. So I could just come over here. What do I wanna do? I wanna show a layer. Now I don't have a layer built yet, so I can just keep this uh, unassigned or I can insert a new layer, right? Uh, so I'll just insert a new layer. We'll just call it untitled layer. And when the user clicks this marker, I hit OK. So I have my trigger there. And now when I come out of this, I would just have to build my layers. Uh, so this is kind of slow right now. And then here's that layer we did. So maybe on this layer, I'm just going to have a, we'll just, um, we'll just put a shape in there. So this is the exit, right? Big exit here. And so very simple, right? Preview this. And we've got this really simple interaction. 
so building the interaction itself, you know, building the 360 thing is pretty simple. It's just going to insert your image and then your markers and whatnot, put triggers, whatever you want to do with those, right? In this case, we're going to go to a layer, click on that. So it shows the layer and then, um, then whatever else I want to do with store. And again, to me, the 360 is similar to anything else. You could do 360 stuff, right? Just image, put labels on there. But then the real power is for a storyline developer is that you have the full range of storyline available to you. So like in these examples, this one here, I'm clicking, this is you know just a car coming onto the screen and I click to a layer and I, I've got the, the 360 image here, but I'm not, I don't have to have the full screen. I could, I could make this smaller, right? Like that. It doesn't have to be the entire screen available to me. Um, I could size it up like I would any other picture. Um, this example here, that's the one I just put together. Here's the example where I go from one, I'm jumping to different uh, layers and these layers have full screen 360 on here. So this is a 360 image. And then within this 360 image, I'm jumping to layers with 360 and, I, and then I can use the animations and transitions and whatnot in there. Um, this one here, you can see, you know, this was that dentist office and then you can see these are the layers with the information. What I really like is I don't have to, you know, if I want to do something really quickly, I can just use what Storyline is going to give me that's pre-built, right? Just like you would if you were using the, the markers that you get, you know, these, these markers here that you get right now, right? The markers here, those are great, quick, easy to work with. But you know, if I want a custom look, that's the nice thing about Storyline. I can say, well, I don't want to use those markers. I'm just going to build my own markers. And in the same sense, you're going to get this pre-built environment, you know, with the labels and whatnot. But if you want to extend it and make it much more custom or dynamic, then you can, you know, you have the full range of Storyline available to you. So you can work with the layers, you can work with state changes, you can work with um, the variables and those things. I think in this example here, let's see, this example here, I've got the characters, right? And so I'm, let's see how I built this. I am changing the state of the characters on the, this here, let's see. So here I'm changing the state. I thought I was using variables, but I'm not on this one. Uh, but you can use variables or whatever you want to do to track those things. So, I mean, that's that's essentially it. I mean, I can show you some other examples. I might as well do that. We've got some time. Let me let me stop sharing. I'll share the other storyline screen. Um, those are samples. They're not as good looking, but there's a lot of different examples in there. So let me, uh, where'd, where'd my demo screen go? Okay, and share screen application and we'll go to this other storyline file i believe this is it all right so yeah and here i've got a few examples so like um i was just playing around with some different ideas let's just preview the entire project and then i can walk through it one of them i'm actually i inserted some a quiz question using a light box no not a light box i used a just a link to a quiz question, then come back. And another one, I kind of built my own little quick knowledge check using layers and some variables and all of that. So we'll, we can look at some of the different examples. Um, once this comes out and you start playing around with it, you'll come up with a lot of really creative ways to work with that. So the real power is that you have this ability to take the 360 image and, and put that inside of your storyline course and really make it part of your course and not like it's a separate piece inside the course, which I think is what, when you look at a lot of the 360 type products out there, they're kind of standalone or they're like a piece inside the course. And then with this, it'll just be part of the course. So here, this is a good example. This is similar to the one I had here. Um, I think I turned the layers off. I don't know why this isn't working here. Let's skip that one. All right, so this was the car tour, right? So I got a car just clicking through here. Got, again, using layers to show some information. This here, this is one where I'm using variables now. So I wanna track 
Now I would probably do it with hotspots, but maybe I want you to identify something. So you're going to click through here and then I can track what you're doing with variables, right? Um, and so you can see, uh, this is pretty simple, but you can kind of see how that works. And then once you have accomplished something, then I can, you know, do something else. Here's one where I built this and I could maybe explore an environment. You've got to do something. And then once you've done those things, then you can come to the question. You click the question. Now these are, this I set up as layers, right? Cause I can use a pre-built question structure and you'll see that in a second, or I can just build my own structure. And here I just built this here and then it gets feedback. There's a little audio effect in here and I'm just jumping to a layer. And then when I get the right choice, you know, it's giving me some feedback and I click and then I'm, I'm done with that. Um, here's one. Uh, this again was like kind of ex identify hazards. So in, we don't have, oops, we don't have uh, hot, well, there weren't hotspots when I built this. So this, I'd put hotspots in here and then you'd kind of identify the things. And so we're tracking this using variables again to track. And then if I click the wrong one, I should get some feedback here on the layer. And then good job. I track that with variables. And then let's see here. This is what I thought, you know, how could I use something like this? What if I just want to replace bullet points, right? So instead of having a slide with bullet points, maybe I just have a nice picture in here, right? It's they're essentially still just looking at a screen with information, but they get to kind of interact with the screen a little bit, you know, so maybe I can just use it. These are my bullet points instead of that. And they get a click. And then again, I'm tracking this with variables. So I have a quiz question here and you can't access the quiz question until you've completed all of the, this. And then, so I'm using variables. I'll show you how that's set up. So I've got my information and once I've completed that, now I can go to the quiz question. And now this is actually linking to a slide. So I have a different scene with the quiz question. You know, I can go through here, um, do that. And it takes me back to this thing. Now I'd probably get rid of this layer once I've already visited, but you know, that's just a simple storyline thing. Um, here, this was again, just different things you can do. Like here's a little mouse over effect so I can learn about something this person's looking at. And when I click on it, it takes me into here and then I can learn about blood or whatever this was. I can't remember what this was, blood cells or something. And then I can close it and then I'm back inside here. So you can, you know, again, everything you can do is storyline. And this is really just like, almost just like an image that you insert in here. Um, this was, I was playing around with some ideas. Like, again, just depends on what you do, but you know, here's three different things in here. So maybe I have an activity and you need to look up stuff, right? So you can be in an office environment, identify hazards. Maybe there's something that you put on your computer screen. You just have to build the images and then, you know, you've got multiple things on there. So I think there's probably a lot of really cool things that you could come up with that. And again, this is a button. So you can see it all kind of works. So I can put the button on top of these things. Um, and let me show you the tour. I did a tour here. So this is if I wanted to show like maybe it's an office building. So I do a combination of things here. These are actually going to slides with different images from inside the house. And this is a, just a regular button on the screen. So I click on here. It's going to take me in, right? Click here. And then you can see I can look around, look outside. Looks like it's a nice day outside. I'm going to go back outside here. And then you'll have better icons. And then I can jump into another slide. And then maybe I'm going to explore the house. Um, then I'm in the house here. Really cool. Let me go back out. Come down here. What's in here? I think a bedroom again, right? There's a hallway bedroom let me go out of the house so you could see you could build something uh, where you have um, you know a tour of the office or you know whatever it is you want to build I know that I was talking to somebody who's an insurance works for an insurance company and they train their adjusters to they go into like a house that might have have fire damage and they have to go identify things in the house so you could easily build something like that the key thing here is having the 360 images I know like I have a Google Pixel. And I think most of the phones 
aren't capable now of shooting the 360 degree images. And then you can buy, if you're doing a lot of this, you'd probably want to buy a camera that will make it a lot faster for you. Cause I think with my phone, I have to stand and take 500 pictures to get that effect. But, um, if you had one of those 360 cameras, it's going to take the image all at one time and stitch it together uh, and save you some time. Um, but that's basically it. I mean, I can show some more stuff. Again, the feature set's not complete yet. So I only have a few things I can show. And, I, you know, like the hotspots weren't, I think they're available now on there. But, you know, nothing's pretty yet. And we don't have all of the icons. We don't have all of the capabilities. But you can kind of get a pretty good sense of how that will work. Uh, so I can go ahead and take some questions and then uh, see uh, what people want to know. Yeah, let's see here. See some of the questions that were coming up in here. Yeah, I, I All right. have yeah. uh, collected them for you and I can all right. write in here so you have all of them together. Oh, I think it takes out all the everything. Oh, no, it's okay. And there's a, the question from Erica just on top of my uh, message. <laughs> okay. So you got all the questions there. All right. How do you move to the right or left as a course user through the room or car? All right. So generally you're going to, because it's, it's a 360 image, you're going to click and drag it. I'm not sure, like we were talking about some of the accessibility things. I'm not sure how, you know, if I was designing that as a course developer and if I, let's say I had keyboard requirements, um, there's going to be a tour option where you'll be able to control going from one marker to the next marker. Um, so that, I'm not exactly sure how all that navigation will work. The, from an accessibility perspective, you know, it, essentially the 360 image requires being able to see and move around. So I think from a construction perspective, the developer would have to develop a, an alternative version of that information. So if I had a car tour, um, you know, it doesn't make sense for a screen reader to go through a 360 image, but you could have an alternate version of that information available for the screen reader. Um, in terms of just navigating it, you're just going to be inside that image. Uh, and if you're thinking about like storyline, you're just going to navigate your course. And that 360 image is really no different than if you just had an image or a video on the screen. So your next previous next buttons or whatever type of navigation you put in the course is going to work um, the same way it would if you had the 360 images. Uh, let's see here. Um, Let's see, I don't have my glasses on. Da, da, da. We don't have a 360 camera. Will there be 360 pictures? Um, well, yes, there'll be some starter images. Um, the, most of the images I have, I, I have like one of those deposit photo accounts. Um, so what I do is I think AppSumo, this is a good, if you don't have any, uh, any like, iStock or, or one of those things. AppSumo, every year there's deposit photos has some deal where you can buy credit. So it's like, for me, it's like 40 cents a credit. So it's like two images for a dollar. Um, so I always buy like a thousand images because it doesn't cost that much. And then I've got a big stockpile. But I noticed when I was going through deposit photo, if you do a search for VR images, you'll have a lot of options available to you you know if you need to buy some stock images most of the stuff i'm using here are stock images except for the travel ones the phone if i insert um if i if i'm using my phone and let's say i go to a warehouse uh if i use my pixel phone i could stand in one spot with a pixel phone and take the 360 uh create that and I, I don't know how the iPhone works, but most of the phones have some sort of VR capabilities in there now. And if I just shot a panographic one, I just have to shoot a wide image and then I can insert that. So you'll get some starter images, but, you know, they're just going to be generic. Uh, so most likely if you're going to use this feature, you're going to 
use it for something specific to your organization. I think typically you see people have things like you have to identify things um, in your like workplace, maybe a workplace hazards or things like that, or maybe it's a tour. Uh, so having just generic stock images, you'll have some to start to use, uh, but you're probably going to need to use your own images. It's probably going to make the most sense when you're actually building your own courses. Um, yeah, and the cameras, I was looking, I haven't played, I don't, I didn't buy a camera, but I was looking yesterday online. They're not that expensive. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll buy a few cameras to play around with. So at least when I'm doing workshops and stuff, I can recommend the ones and that I find that work well and that aren't too expensive. Um, but I'll play around with those and see how they work. But, you know, you're probably talking again, I don't know what the cost is over there, over where you're at, but you know, I, I saw some cameras as low as $150. Now, I will probably wouldn't buy a $150 camera because you're probably getting what you pay for. But, you know, generally about three dollars $400, and then um, that'll save you a lot of time. You're not having to, like with my Pixel, I have to stand around and probably take 50 pictures, um, and then it stitches it together. But with the 3D camera, it's going to do all that automatically. Uh, let's see here. This file size isn't really, it's, it's nominal. It's not going to be, um, it's not massive. Uh, matter of fact, let me, uh, these images can get large though. That is, that is a concern if you have a, a, you know, when you're talking about bandwidth, these images themselves, you know, they get large. If I'm, I'm not going to switch screens, but let me just look real quick on my, on my computer. What, some of those panographic images are so um, like that car image for example that's the car images that single image is 17 megabytes and that's that's 9,000 pixels by 4,200 pixels the other I have some other ones they're all about 20 megabytes it looks like let me look at um, one of the dentist office picture the dentist office picture, that's 12,000 pixels by 6,000, but that's only seven megabytes. So that's not too bad. So it's really just, you'll have to play around. I mean, that's the, that's the, the way those things work, right? Is you kind of have to um, test it like you would anything. If you're going to insert, if you're going to insert um, videos or insert uh you know images or stock whatever stuff you always have to consider the size of the media that you're inserting and then um, i don't know i'll find out about that i don't know what we do on our end if we do any compression after you've inserted it we might do that i don't know yet because we haven't looked at the the i haven't you know i've just been playing with this for probably the last couple of weeks or so yeah and this will be in storyline 360 but not storyline 3. So um, if you have the Articulate 360, then uh, you'll, you'll get that as part of the features in there. And uh, it's going to be fun. Um, if, you, if you're interested in being on the beta, I don't know how the beta works. You can email me. It's tom at articulate.com. And then just say you're interested in the beta. I don't know what the rules are and how that works. Um, but if you're interested, I could at least let the developers know, um, and then they can, uh, then I'll let you know if they, if they're taking people in the betas, but, um, if you're interested, we could do that. Is there anything you want to see or any other questions? I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward feature, right? Just insert it, put some labels on there, and then it's whatever you want to do in storyline. I really like the putting multiple images on there. I'm just trying to figure out different reasons why I would do that. Um, most of it I've been coming up with is mostly novel, but I think like the office idea, if you have a computer screen, you just have to design the right image for that. But if I had a computer screen and I had a, I don't know, maybe a, a zoom, had a, a phone and I can zoom in on the phone and then I can do that image on there or something. And maybe there's something I can do on the phone, maybe some exploration type activity. I could see something like that, but um, that part to me is pretty interesting as if being able to put multiple versions on there and you could stack them, right? You don't have to, like, I'll show you. Um, am I still showing my storyline screen? I can't tell. Um, 
<laughs> I'm not okay. Let me uh, let me switch to storyline here, and I'll just show here. Where's my storyline screen at? Where did storyline go? It's weird. Storyline disappeared. It's not even showing it. No wonder it's not showing it. Huh? Well, I don't know. Storyline's not showing up in the in the screen sharing. I think Demio kicked me out. <laughs> so I'm gonna let me see if I can stop sharing and then see if that'll reload it in there. Okay, and then. What are new questions? Nope. That's or weird. Brenda. Well, it, huh? Interesting. Let me hit cancel and then let me try it again here. Open it back up and application window. No, nope. it's weird. It's like storyline just disappeared. It only shows Chrome. Well, we'll just assume that's providential. <laughs> All right. I think uh, I can't demo anymore. Extra questions. Yes. Um, Jürgen is asking if uh, his idea would be to 360 around a product, but not sure if that's possible. Yeah, no, so it's not like a, you're kind of like you have a center point and you're spinning around it. So you don't, you're not going around that. You're kind of like in the center point and it's like you're spinning this way, but you're not, you can't go around the image. So yeah, we don't have, it's not like that type of 360. Okay, thank you. And Brenda is asking, when you jump, jump from one slide to another, is it possible to jump uh, the photo in a certain direction? Jump in a certain direction. Well, you're going to, so if you, if you have a label or a hot spot, right, and you click on it and you jump to another slide, it's going to jump to wherever you want it to go to. So whatever you trigger it to, um, I don't know if that's what you're asking or if you're asking if I jump and it jumps to a different part of the image and spins it, is that what you want? I'm not sure how that'll work. Like you might, um, like one of the things I was playing with, which I can't show now is I created uh, a layer with a bunch of thumbnails, right? So I have a layer with a bunch of thumbnails and then I wanted to click and jump to different labels. So I'm not sure how that'll work in, in the final product. Let's see, in a lot of 360 shows, you have one default direction. Yeah, in, in this, you're in the tool. So you build the 360 image and then it's really like an image inside a storyline. So you're not limited, you know, because the only thing you're doing in that image is you're spinning it around, right? You're navigating the image but everything else is just like regular storyline. So well, however you want to navigate the screen is going to be the way you have it set up in the course. And I can't really, well, I can't show anything now, but you know, everything I have now is very limited anyway. So I don't have all the features and things enabled in that yet. But it'll be fun when you play with it. I actually have been enjoying it. And it's fast. I'm surprised that like those demos I built only took me probably like an hour or so. Um, 360 video. We're looking at that. Um, we'll do it. The goal is we'll get the feature out and then you'll have it. And then um, we're looking at 360 video. To be honest, 360 video is kind of weird because the video is running in real time. And so you're in a place and you kind of have to spin around this video. So let's say, like I've seen a lot of use cases where people are, you know, they come across a person, they're talking to that person, but then the person is talking to you, but you can actually spin away from the person, right? And um, so we're gonna, we're, the plan is we'll roll it out with images. We're going to look and see how people want to use it with video and kind of figure out, you know, how to make the tool the best way with video. So the plan is to have video in there eventually, but we're not quite sure about the practicality, you know, the, the investment to get that working before we release it versus releasing it with the images. And so, um, you yeah. know, I don't know. I'm not necessarily a fan of three, this 360 video, but I'm not the decider about that. So uh, we'll probably... <laughs> 
have it in there. But I think the 360 video seems a little, it's, it's novel when you're in it, but it does get a little disorienting orienting because you're in a, you're in a video that's moving in real time and you're kind of stationary. So it's really, how do I want to design it? And then I think, you know, the reality for a, a course author is it's probably going to be challenging enough for people to get 360 images in their courses, right? Let alone these massive videos and all this stuff that goes with that. But the plan is to have the 360 videos in there, but it won't be on release. I think we have a, okay, a question. Is it possible to say a certain point on. as it's the center? Yeah, so right now I can't, but um, the that's one of the things is like to have an entry point, right? Like this is whenever I come in here, this is the place. Because right now the way it works is if I'm in it and I leave and I come back, I'm going to be in the place I left, which might be what you want too. But um, the goal will be to have like a starting point. Like whenever I come in here, this is the center point. You know, like like if I go to a room, I don't want to just be in a closet, right? I want to maybe be in a certain point in the room where I'm looking at the most of the room and then I can navigate it, right? So having a, a, a starting point is going to be one of the features that'll be in there. My house here is making a lot of noise. I don't know why. <laughs> So hopefully there's not an explosion here. I don't know what's going on. I, the gas pipes are just banging and stuff. <laughs> uh, it wasn't too bad for us. We could hear you very clear. All right, cool. So I think we're about uh, about finished. I don't see any more right. questions so, uh, coming up. So. Yeah, so if you're interested in the beta, just email me, tom at articulate.com. I can't guarantee that you can get into it. Um, I don't know who, if they're letting people, but if you're interested, let me know and then I'll see, you know, I can find out because um, they'll probably want people testing it. And, you know, we want to see how people want to use the tool and get some feedback before we release it. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you for being customers. We always appreciate that. You know, if you need help, jump in the community. We want to help you out. Make sure you get the, the most out of the investment you make with these tools. All right, cool. Yeah, it's okay. I've got coffee. <laughs> yeah, then everything's good, right? Thank you. It was a really nice right, to get a cool. sneak preview, and we really look forward to uh, this new feature. Say All hi right, uh, to David day. from us today. <laughs> I, I will do that. Okay, I'll okay. see him in a little Thank bit. you all uh, for all right. your attendance. Have a nice day. Right. Bye. Bye.